everyone uh, today we're going to continue our discussion of power flow by looking into another technique newton raphson uh, which is also known as ac power flow um let's start with the basics uh, Suppose I have a nonlinear equation of the form f of x equals b. So f of x is a set of nonlinear algebraic equations. If you recall from our discussion of uh, <clears throat> Gauss and Gauss-Seidel techniques, we started with a function of the form g of x equals zero, and then I rewrote it in the form of x being equal to h of x. And that gave me the iterative form that I was looking for. Um, I want to have the same thing here, but our approach is going to be slightly different. So what I do is I take that f of x equals b, and I write it as 0 equals b minus f of x. Then what I do is I add two terms, a times x, to the left-hand side and the right-hand side, followed by multiplying both sides by a inverse. Um, obviously, a inverse times a would be the identity matrix, so what I get is x equals x plus a inverse times this term. This is that iterative form that I'm looking for. So anything on the right-hand side would be the older values of x, which here I'm showing as x at iteration new. And anything on the left-hand side is the new uh, values, which I show as iteration new plus one. That letter that you see is the Greek letter new. Um, so you would start from initial conditions, um, x of zero, plug in those values here and here, uh, find x of one, then plug in x of one to find x of two and so on. Uh, in order to get uh, an equation of this form for the newton raphson technique, we perform the Taylor series expansion of function f of x. You probably recall that if I want to expand function f of x um, about uh, in the vicinity of a point x of zero, it will be of the form f of x of zero plus the derivative of that function with respect to x and evaluated at that point x of zero times the difference between x and x of zero. And this continues. So you're going to have the second derivative term and the third derivative term and so on, which we refer to as the higher order terms. So this whole series expansion would be equal to b. What I do is I first ignore the higher order terms uh, because I only want to have the first derivative and then with a little bit of mathematical manipulation I recreate this equation x equals x of zero times this derivative inverse times b minus f of x again evaluated at x of zero. Similar to before, anything on the right-hand side is the older values. Anything in the left-hand side would be the newer values. So x at iteration nu plus 1 would be x at iteration nu plus this derivative, which here I'm showing it as j, uh, which is known as the Jacobian matrix. So the derivative inverse, and notice that it is evaluated at the old value of x times b minus f of x, again evaluated at all value of x. Here, like before, you start with initial conditions. To find x of 1, you plug in the x of 1 value to find x at iteration 2, and you continue this process. How do we apply this to AC power flow? Recall that uh, we had an equation of the form s of k tilde equals v of k tilde, which is the phasor of voltage at uh, node k times um, the current, which is uh, summation of j going from 1 to n of ykj vj tilde, the whole thing conjugate. So this is what I had uh, for the Gauss and Gauss techniques. For AC power flow, what I do is I will break it down into uh, real and imaginary parts. So V of K, which in phasor form would be magnitude times um, an exponential of phase angle, would become V of K times cosine of delta K plus J sine of delta K. Likewise, for the entry KJ of the admittance matrix, I write it as a real part G of KJ and an imaginary part B of KJ. As a reminder, recall that whenever I show capital letter Y and G and B, 
these are the entries of the admittance matrix or uh, for example the real part, parts and the imagined parts associated with those entries these are not exactly the admittance and the conductance and the susceptance values um, if i plug in this formulation and this formulation into the equation that i have for s of k um, i will get vk times summation of ykj conjugate and vj conjugate notice because it's a conjugate you're going to have that negative sign here. Next thing I have to do is I have to multiply these cosine of delta and sine of delta k uh, into that summation and then break the whole thing into a real part and an imaginary part. The real part will be my p of k, which is active power at node k. The imaginary part will be q of k, reactive power. Uh, you notice in this formulation, I have cosines and sines of what I show as delta of kj by definition delta of kj is delta k minus delta j and you remember that uh, cosine of an angle minus another angle would be cosine of alpha cosine of beta plus sine of alpha sine of beta and then sine of alpha minus beta would be sine of alpha cosine of beta minus sine of beta cosine of alpha. I do encourage you to do this exercise at home, multiply the uh, you know, cosine of delta k, sine of delta k into the term within the summation. Uh, you're going to get a bunch of uh, bilinear terms of cosine, cosine, sine, 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 cosine, and then try to recreate these two equations that I am showing you here. Now, um, remember that in power flow, some of the buses are PV buses, some of them are PQ buses, and normally we have one bus, which is slack bus. For the slack bus, I know the voltage magnitude and phase angle, nothing else. For the PV buses, I know the voltage magnitude and active power. For the PQ buses, I know both active power and reactive power. So for the PV buses, what is known is the P, the active power, I show it as p given which is the value given to me and for pq buses i have both p's that are given to me and q's that are given to me um, so what i do now is i create uh, power mismatch equations uh, recall from the previous slide that when i'm trying to find f of x equals b I basically find a mismatch equation that says B minus F of X. That was the equation multiplied, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> by the Jacobian matrix. So here my B would be the values of P and Q that I have, and F of X would be those equations for uh, active power at node K and reactive power at node K. <clears throat> Okay, let's uh, form these power mismatch equations. So for active power, I have the values given for active power of node K minus the equation. So that would be the given value minus the equation that I showed on the previous slide. From now on, I'm going to refer to this as F of P at node K to indicate that this is a nonlinear function. For delta Q, the same thing, the given value minus the equation uh, for reactive power. So I show it as F of Q at bus K. What is my objective uh, for uh, solving power flow? I basically want to find the values of VK, VJ, and delta KJs, which would make F of PQ to be equal to the given values of PK and F of QK to be given, uh, equal to the given values of QK. So that's my objective. You form these uh, active and reactive power mismatch equations and check them. If they are zero, that means whatever you have for V and delta is the solution to power flow. Um, normally, however, this doesn't happen that easily. So what you get is something which is non-zero. Uh, what you would have to do then is to uh, include that in that iterative equation to keep iter iteratively updating Vs and deltas in order to get as close to zero as possible. Uh, mismatch equations, typically you don't get to actual zero, but you have a threshold of 10 to the power of minus four, minus five. So as long as the difference between 
the P's and Q's and those equations are within the threshold of error, you can stop your power flow and assume that you have found the solution. One other thing that I want you to pay attention to is the number of equations and the number of unknowns. Uh, imagine I have an N bus system, uh, one of which is the Slack bus. So the rest of them are PV buses and PQ buses. Um, I basically know the active power for all PV and PQ buses. So I have N minus one equations for P's. Um, and imagine in this system, M of the buses are PQ. For PQ buses, I know M equations for the reactive power. So in total, I have N plus M minus one equations. How many unknowns do I have? Uh, for PV buses, I, don't, I know the voltage magnitude, but not the phase angle. Um, and for PQ buses, I don't know the phase angle either. So N minus one phase angles are unknown. The only phase angle known is for the slack bus. And then uh, while I do know the voltage magnitude for PV buses, I do not know the value for PQ buses. So I have M voltage magnitudes that are unknown. And collectively, I have N plus M minus one uh, unknowns. So I have the same number of unknowns uh, then as equations, which is why I can solve power flow. How do I formulate it? Uh, let me rewrite that uh, basic equation for you. So x at iteration nu plus one is equal to x at iteration nu plus a Jacobian matrix inverse times b minus f of x evaluated at uh, iteration v value. Iterations are a new value. This one as well evaluated at iteration x of nu. Um, in the case of power, so that's the general uh, form for solving a nonlinear set of equations iteratively for power flow. However, uh, the states are the phase angles and uh, voltage magnitudes. So you have the deltas and Vs for iteration nu plus one. That would equal to deltas and Vs for iteration nu uh, plus the Jacobian matrix. The Jacobian matrix would be the derivative of function f with respect to the state variable. So um, if you recall, this was derivative of f with respect to x. Now I have uh, my f functions are f of p for active power and f of q for reactive power. My x's are delta as well as v's. So uh, the Jacobian matrix will be derivative of equation for active power with respect to delta, active power with respect to v equation for reactive power with respect to delta and reactive power with respect to V once evaluated at values for iteration nu and then inverse. Uh, times that term B minus F, so the given values for P's minus the equations for P's, given values for Q's minus the equations for Q's, and these are the mismatch equations at iteration nu. These are the values that you would like to set to zero. Um, so solving, uh, or rather formulating the newton raphson power flow is, is quite simple. All you have to do is to find the derivatives of those equations with respect to deltas and Vs, um, update the values based on the latest values of delta and V, invert that matrix, and then multiply it by that vector. Um, in general, if you have a system which is small enough, you can just directly find the derivatives with respect to delta and V and form the entries of the Jacobian matrix. However, if you have a relatively large system and you don't want to do it by hand, um, you can do this parametrically. Um, let's go back to what we had for uh, equation for active power. F of P, uh, active power for node K, is the equation that I'm showing here, which is highlighted in gray. Um, notice that uh, what I did in this case is I took out the term associated with J equals K uh, from that summation. So if J equals K, I have a VK, GKK, cosine of delta KK, and BKK, sine of delta KK. So let me write it uh, out here. So the term for the summation associated with J equals K would be VK, times VK 
and g k j cosine of delta k k plus b sorry k k b k k sine of delta k k now cosine of delta k k is cosine of by definition delta k minus delta k cosine of zero which is one sine of delta k k is sine of delta k minus delta k which is sine of zero and it's zero so that term goes away and what i will be left with is g of k k times v k squared which is here and notice that in the summation i'm saying j goes from one to n but j is not equal to k why did i do this because when you're trying to find the derivatives it's important to take that part out because the derivative of that part with respect to the deltas would be different when you take care of the cosine set it to one and sine set it to zero. Uh, now um, let's uh, look at you know how some of these terms are going to look like. Um, for example, imagine um, I want to find the derivative of f of p, that equation there with respect to delta k. Obviously, the first term does not have a delta in it, so the derivative would be zero. For the second term, the derivative would be vk times summation of vj and then you have cosine of delta kj cosine of delta kj derivative with respect to delta k would be minus sine so minus sine um, and then sine of delta kj derivative with respect to uh, delta k would be cosine so that's what you get for uh, derivative of f with respect to delta k uh, what if i want to find the derivative with respect to the angle of another bus not the same bus so in that case, I am looking for the term in that summation that is a function of delta L. The only term in this summation that is the function of delta L is when J equals L. In that case, what you will have is VK, VL, GKL, cosine of delta KL plus BKL, sine of delta KL. And derivative of that with respect to delta L would be this term. Uh, do remember that when I have a cosine of delta kj, this is uh, by definition cosine of delta k minus delta j. I'm showing it as delta kj to kind of reduce the number of nested parentheses. Um, so derivative of this with respect to delta k is different from derivative of this with respect to delta j. Why? Because if you have a cosine of u and you want to find its derivative with respect to x, this will be u prime or derivative of u with respect to x times minus sine of u. Uh, so here, my u is delta k minus delta j. If my uh, variable of uh, derivative is delta k, u prime is one. If the variable of uh, uh, the uh, differential is delta j, uh, then uh, my uh, u prime would be minus one. So pay attention to that. Otherwise, you're going to get the wrong uh, plus minus signs. Um, I'm not going to belabor the point here. The idea is pretty much the same. Uh, but for um, f of q, we will follow the same thing. Again, notice I took out the term associated with j equals k, which becomes this guy. And then I can find the derivatives with respect to all the deltas and all of these. Now, how do we um, run or uh, model and run PowerFlow? Um, your algorithm, um, you can implement it in MATLAB or any other software package, consists of multiple steps. The first step that you have to do is you form the admittance matrix. Once you're done with that, you start with initial guesses for bus voltages. We typically go with magnitude of one and phase angle of zero. Uh, <clears throat> once you have done that, you compute the power mismatches. Remember that uh, I have n minus one power mismatches for active power and m power mismatches for reactive power. Um, I, I calculate all these. So the p givens minus the equation f of p and the q given minus the equation f of q evaluated when all the voltages are one per unit magnitude zero degree phase angle. Then I look at the largest uh, mismatch for active power <clears throat> and largest mismatch for reactive power. 
as long as they are less than uh, my threshold, like I said, 10 to the power of minus four, minus five, something like that. Uh, if they're less than the threshold, that means you have the solution and you stop. In that situation, which is very unlikely, that means that all the buses are in fact one with angle of zero. Um, if the, this values, the maximum mismatch values are actually larger than the threshold of error, you're gonna have to continue. So what do you do? You compute the Jacobian elements, as I showed you on the previous slide, evaluate them at all voltages, one per unit, all angles, zero degrees, find the inverse of that, and then use the equation I showed on the previous slide to update and find all the deltas for iteration one and these for iteration one. Then you go to this step. With the new deltas and Vs, calculate maximum of delta Ps and maximum of delta Qs. Are you within the range of error? If you are, that's your solution. If you're not, you're gonna have to continue. So you write this as a um, either a for loop or a while loop, depending on how you like to uh, code your model. Um, and uh, you know, continue iterating until you get the final solution. Now, the best way to learn power flow is uh, through an example. So here we're gonna do a very simple example, a three bus system. And I'm gonna show you how these equations will look like. Imagine I have this system, uh, bus one is a slack bus for which I know the voltage magnitude and phase angle. Bus two is PV bus. I know that it is injecting one per unit active power, and I know that the voltage is being kept fixed at one per unit. And bus three is a PQ bus with a demand of two per unit active power and 0.5 per unit reactive power. The first thing that I do is I find the um, admittance matrix. So this is a three bus system, which means the admittance matrix is going to be three by three. Recall that um, admittance matrix entries are defined in a special way. Uh, diagonal entries would be the sum of all the admittances connected to a node. Off diagonal entries would be negative of the admittances between those two nodes. <clears throat> so for example, uh, for this, uh, uh, let's start with row one. Y11 is the sum of all admittances connected to bus one, which is minus J10 and minus J12, which is minus J22. Y12 is the negative of the admittance connected between buses one and two. So negative of minus J10, which is J10. With the same logic, Y3, Y13 would be negative of J minus 12, which is J12. And notice when you have a minus J times a number, that's an admittance. If you have a plus J times a number, that would be an impedance. So here, because I have minuses, I know that these are admittance values. Um, you do the same thing for bus two. <clears throat> so Y21 is going to be J10, uh, which is a negative of that minus J10. Y22 will be J18. Y23 uh, would be, uh, I'm sorry, with a minus sign, minus J18 and J8 for Y23. And likewise, the last row will be J12, J8, and minus J20. Now what I'll do is I will uh, write the equations for uh, active power and reactive power. In this particular case, uh, all the admittances have only an imaginary part, only a susceptance value. So I don't have a conductance. When you don't have a conductance, the equations actually become quite simple. So your F of P for bus K, that will be uh, your VK summation J from one to N of VJ BKJ sine of delta kj and f of qk will be again vk summation one more time one to n of vj but this time it will be bkj minus cosine of delta kj which i will bring the minus sign here now how many buses do i have three buses uh slack bus put that aside you have one PV bus and, uh, and one PQ bus. 
for the PV bus, I have one equation for active power <clears throat> because I know the active power, but not the reactive power. For the PQ bus, I can write two equations, one for active power, one for reactive power. So I will have equations for F of P for bus two, F of P for bus three, and F of Q for bus three. Let's start with F of P for bus two. So that would be V2, which is one, times a summation. Uh, let's say J equals one. So that would be V1, which is one, times BKJ, that would be B21. B21 is 10. Notice that Y21 is J10, but YKJ in this case is J BKJ. So the Bs, they do not have uh, the, that uh, J term in them. So you only have 10. So that's 10 times sine of delta 2, 1, which is delta 2 minus delta 1, but delta 1 is 0, so I can just write delta 2. Let's continue. J equals 2. So I will get V2 plus B2, 2, or, or rather times B2, 2 times sine of delta 2, 2, which is sine of delta 2 minus delta 2. Sine of 0 is 0, so that term is irrelevant. Let uh, set J to be 3. So I have V3, which is unknown, is one of the parameters, times B23, which in this case would be 8, times sine of delta 2, 3, which is delta 2, two minus delta 3. So that's my F of P and 2. F of P and 3, uh, that would be uh, minus V3, or, or sorry, uh, plus V3, so V3 times that summation. V1, 1, times B of 3, 1, which is 12, times sine of delta 3 minus delta 1, which is sine of delta 3, plus V2, which is 1, B of 3, 2, which is 8, times sine of delta 3 minus delta 2, uh, plus uh, J equals 3, which is V3, B33, sine of delta 3 minus delta 3. That sign is 0, so it's irrelevant. And then we do F of Q and 3, which is minus V3 times the summation V1 times B31, which is 12, cosine of delta 3 minus delta 1, which is cosine of delta 3, uh, plus B2, which is again 1, uh, B32, uh, which is 8, times cosine of delta 3 minus delta 2, um, and lastly, plus V3 times B33, which in this case is 20, times cosine of delta 3 minus delta 3. Notice that that term does exist here because cosine of zero, unlike sine, is one. So I have V3 times 20 times one. These are the three equations that I have. Now, if I want to continue and uh, write the powerful equations, uh, what do I know? I know that I have my uh, states as delta two, delta three, and V3. Notice that V2 is known, but V3 is not known. That state at iteration nu plus one equals delta two, delta three, V three at iteration nu plus the Jacobian matrix inverse times powers minus the equations. Let's start with the powers. What is the power at bus one, at, the, at the bus two, active power, that's one. So one minus something. Remember that these are in the form of E minus F of X, right? For uh, bus three, what do I have? Uh, the demand is two per unit, but my convention for power is generation minus demand. So that would be minus two per unit minus something. And likewise for reactive power, minus 0.5 minus something. Now, for the first row, 
is power at bus two minus the equation of power at bus two. Um, and that's, um, if I write it a bit more neatly, that would be 10 times sine of delta two plus eight V three sine of delta two minus delta three. Uh, for the second one, it's uh, the same way, minus uh, 12 times V3 uh, sine of delta 3 plus 8 times V3 sine of delta 3 minus delta 2. And for the reactive power, that would be minus 12 V3 cosine of delta 3 minus 8 V3 cosine of delta three minus delta two plus 20 times V three squared. And then these terms will be your D of F of P and two with respect to delta two, D of F of P and two with respect to delta three, D of F of P and two with respect to V three. D of F of P and three with respect to delta two, D of F of P and three with respect to delta three, D of F of P uh, and three with respect to V three. And last row will be D of F of Q and three with respect to delta two, D of F of Q and three with respect to delta three, F of uh, Q and three with respect to V three. Um, I'm not going to find those derivatives for you. That's a pretty simple thing to do. You can take a look at, uh, you know, these equations that I have and find the derivative. For example, just as, as one example, imagine D of F of P and two with respect to Delta two. This is the equation that I'm looking into. So that would be 10 times sine of Delta two derivative with respect to Delta two is cosine of Delta two uh, plus eight, v3 uh, times cosine of delta 2 minus delta 3. Let's do one more example. Uh, D of, let's say, f of q and 3 with respect to v3. So I'm looking at this equation. That would be minus 12 cosine of delta 3 minus 8 cosine of delta 3 minus delta 2 uh, plus 40 v so what you would do is you would find the derivatives parametrically and put them in that Jacobian matrix. And then I start with initial conditions. All the um, deltas are zero, all the Vs are one. Uh, I plug in those values here, calculate the mismatch vector, plug in the values here, calculate the Jacobian matrix, then invert the Jacobian matrix, multiply it by that mismatch vector, add it to zero, zero, one. This is going to give me the values for iteration one. Then I take the values for iteration one, plug them in here, plug them in here, find the inverse, multiply, add to the values at iteration one, I get iteration two. And I repeat that uh, in order to uh, get the, the, you know, uh, get convergence. So hopefully this helps you get a better uh, sense of uh, how newton raphson is formulated and solved. I do encourage you to do this exercise at home uh, just to make sure that you have a good sense of how to find these derivatives and the, you know, calculate the matrix and so on.